I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. If you like the videos that we have produced, please do help us by subscribing to the channel. So I am always asked about what do I do with my beautiful plants which are just on borderline of hardiness? How do I look after them? What is the process of going through the overwintering with them? So you have typical things like salvias, Gora, which is Oenothera, Penstemon, Dahlia, Diacea, and Caryopteris. All of these you can grow in the garden and you can leave in the garden over winter, but there are certain things that you need to think about before you do that. However, if you're growing them in a container, then we can look at different things that you can do. But the pruning process and the cutting back process is the same whether it's grown in the garden or whether it is in a container. So let's start with the Oenothera. They are just coming to the end of their beautiful flowering and these lovely Oenothera, they are grown for the fact that they waft in the breeze and just look fantastic. Now I know this has got a little bit of uh, flower still to come on this, but we're talking about something that you're going to be doing uh, in the next couple of weeks as the frosts start to arrive. So what you're looking at is you are not going to leave this top growth up here. You are going to get rid of top growth because although this does that beautiful walk you know, blowing in the breeze, it also then rocks the plant at the bottom. And you do not want a hole made at the bottom where water will go in. It will then create an ice pack once it freezes. So what we're looking at is looking at reducing all of these stems to around about half their length or to a point which is about a foot uh, 30 centimetres, anywhere between 25 and 30 centimetres in height. So you are going to be taking them down, you're going to be cutting them not at the middle of a actual uh, stem because that leaves you with a horrible dad, you know, dag end here. You want to be cutting to the leaf like so. That makes it tidy, that keeps it all looking. It's quite easy because you just take your snips and you go down to the leaf and there you go, you just cut them off like so. So we'll just carry on going and I'll do half of the plant so you can see the difference between what was the growth and where you are going to. So that is what you would be doing and you do that in your containerized plants and you would do it in your garden plants. Now your garden plants you can then actually um, put them all, um, cover them with mulch around the crown, absolutely fine, that will give them extra protection. If it gets really, really cold, you can take some horticultural fleece. If you don't know what horticultural fleece is, it is this, and you will be able to put that over the top of the plant and just hold it down with bricks or stones, or even if you've got tent pegs, you can peg it into the ground, and that is absolutely fine, and that will just give you your extra bit of protection. So you are taking it down to that point. Keep the flowers. What's the point in throwing those away? Have a little bit of a vase there, you can stick them in there, they'll look great in the garden. Now it's exactly the same uh, idea with the pen stemmen. You've got your last flower spikes there, you're going to take it down and you're going to leave it and perhaps its growth is not as tall so we're going to somewhere about 8-10 inches which is 20-25 centimetres and you are going to leave the plant looking in a nice neat and tidy position. So that will do. This one happens to be Higcoat Pink and again don't waste the flower, stick it in a jam jar. Absolutely great. I love jam jars for putting flowers in, it's really good. You've now got a nice compact plant which will overwinter quite nicely. Again, if it's in the container, you're going to be moving and I'll show you what we do with that. So that is the penstemon. You could, if you have a heated greenhouse and you have heat, basal heat, so you've got a propagator with basal heat, you could take a cutting from some of these bits, but they're getting a little bit woody and it's becoming a little bit late in the season. So you've got to have a sophisticated way of taking cuttings to be taking cuttings now of your penstemon. 
Otherwise, you should have done them a lot earlier. Um, or, you know, it, 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 it might be worth digging up a plant out of the garden and then taking it in and protecting it in that way. I'm just going to keep that little bit because I might take a cutting myself. You've got something like diacea. Now, the diacea is a really interesting plant. It's got square stems here. And wherever you cut it to, it will regrow. You need to not be taking it right down to the base. That is not going to help the plant. So again, it is one of those plants where look at it, see where the flowering stems finish, and then go a couple of leaf joints lower. So you would look at it, it's got flower there, leaf joint, go a couple lower, so you're there. And again, it is a matter of going to where you want to cut, go down and rest on the leaf that you're going to cut above, and then you don't leave a horrible stem. Now, what I was talking about on the Gora is that some people just cut like that. This is not what you want. You do not want that sort of end. You want to leave it tidy. Um, so that is something that you need to be thinking about when you're cutting them back. Um, then that is absolutely fine. And look, we're getting a lovely posy of flowers. So I will just do this one again, similarly like I did with the Gora Oenothera, just to show you half the plant cut back, half as it is looking like that. Now you're going to be doing this very shortly. It be taken by surprise. You know, the frosts are coming along. You need to get these to this point without this stuff, which really rock the plant. Then another one, which is quite easy, is the salvia. And it's exactly the same as it is with those. You've got a bit of flower still on here. It won't last for much longer. So you're going to be taking these stems down. So you just follow it down to halfway and you just snip out nicely. And apart from anything else, this is doing a pruning process whereby you're actually tidying up the plant and you may be starting your framework for the plant for the following year. So it's quite a good way of just getting those little bits out the way. There we go. So we've made a nice framework. These bits will come off a little bit later, but it's just to show you how far you should be going down with your plant material and keeping it looking neat and tidy. These can all stay out in the ground. Something like this, amethyst lips, really is really borderline. So you may be better off growing them in containers most of the time or digging up the plants and bringing them, potting them up, and bringing them in, but also doing that cutting back at the same time. Caryopteris is a beautiful shrub flowering at this time of the year. Fantastic. But once it has finished flowering and the arms are probably a little bit further out here, that is the time. So rule of thumb usually with shrubs is you cut back after flowering, but you're not not doing this hard. What you can see in the center of this plant are lovely little gray growths coming along the actual stems here. Now you cut back to that in the spring, not now. So all you are doing is reducing the amount of weight because if you leave that framework out and you get a heavy snow, all that's going to happen is this plant is going to go down like that. You'll get splits, you'll get cracks. So you want to reduce that um, problem. So you go halfway down. Again, I'm just going to do half of the plant so that you can see what I mean by taking just halfway down. You're again snipping nicely two pairs of buds so that the plant is neat and tidy and you are going to leave it in that state. So there we go. That is the pruned bit. Yes, there's a little bit of flower in here and you, you know, you could be as pernickety as taking all those flower buds out. That is what you're going to leave over winter. And then in the spring, you're going to cut back much, much further. Now there are videos already that we have done, which show you exactly how all of this um, works and what you should be doing later on in the season. So please do look back at our back cut catalog of videos to see these plants all having been done. I've got so much cutting material here. There we go. Nice little posy of flowers. This will go into the house and it can sit there. If you don't like flowers in the house, Give them away to somebody else who does. You know, don't waste this. Um, you know, it, the plants are put on all this energy and they want to, you know, they're giving all these flowers. So 
you know, keep them and enjoy them until they finish. Now, the dahlia is slightly different. The dahlia, you'll have flowers on it. You want this to be frosted before you do anything to it. So let it get frosted. The foliage will go black, disgusting. It looks really horrible. And then suddenly the whole plant will just collapse down and everything will collapse right the way down there. It'll all be black. And then you can cut the stems to around about six inches off the ground level. That's about 15 centimeters. And you just cut it all up you take the container with them in and you take it inside. It doesn't have to go anywhere where there's light. You can put it in a shed. It just has to be near frost free. You can just put them into crates, stack them up. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. If they're in the ground, you then will mulch over the top and you just hope that we don't have a really hard winter. So that is all of those and that's showing you what you should be doing. Now I've got another neat trick. If you, if you do not have a greenhouse, these things, clear storage boxes, really good. Lid lifts off, you've got your cutback plants, you can put them all into this. It's like your own little movable um, cold, you know, store for your plants. Now, obviously I haven't taken the flowers off this, but you can see, well, you could cut that to the height that it is there. Um, they would all fit in really nicely. And then you've got a really good storage area. And I'll just be a little bit mean with these at the moment. You can leave it open, just put it somewhere where there is light. You can leave it open when it's warm, um, warm days and bright days. And other times you can just put it over like this. You know, it's a cold frame in a box. Absolutely fine. If you need to increase the amount of insulation, then get some bubble wrap bubble wrap around the outside, not the inside, because this has got wonderful knob, um, this has got wonderful ridges here. Your bubble wrap will go out. It's like a secondary uh, way of keeping it. You can bubble wrap the top bit here as well. And then if you need to give it a little bit of ventilation, you don't have to take it off completely. You just move it to the side like so, ventilation, no problem at all. And that is one easy way of actually having a simple way of a cold frame, which is not actually that expensive. And it's something that you can use. So old storage boxes that you may have, but they need to be clear ones and they need to have a clear lid as well. And I reckon that is a good way of doing it. And you can put that somewhere quite easily. Um, it can stay outside, you know, it, it, it can stay outside. You don't have to bring it inside. But if you go very cold snap, then you could bring it in and then move it back out again. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.